towards the end of last month, we had Citibank say that uh, Kenya's stocks were largely expensive re relative to other markets of a similar size. Roughly a month later, what are you making of current valuations? Well, uh, the, the probably right on 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 uh, if you on the general market probably right, uh, but uh, how right is a question. Uh, but the but there are still some stocks here and there that we can see on re relative valuation basis that they probably may have some upside too. Uh, so again, if, if if anybody wanted to come into the market and wanted to make some few gains, uh, that then stock picking will be key in this at uh, this time. Well, it also depends on what perspective I would assume that you're looking at this with uh, because so far we've had the market being held up by foreigners where local investors are the ones that are pretty hesitant and questioning the prices on value, right? That's true. Uh, that's because, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the required return on, on investment for, for foreigners is much lower than for the local investors here. Uh, I mean, they, they're able to borrow, uh, I mean, hedge funds and, and other investors, foreign investors are able to borrow at next to nothing and come invest in, 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 our, in our markets. But uh, for, for, for the average Kenyan, it's a bit different. Uh, the, the required uh, return is a bit higher. So uh, it, it may not make sense for the, for, the investor, for the local investors, but for foreigners, it makes perfect sense. Let's take a look at a, a few particular stocks here. I mean, Equity Bank in particular has, be, has had a phenomenal run over the past year. It's up over 70% so far. It and KCB so far, the only two banking players out with numbers. And traders saying that with a price to book value of 1.75, KCB looks highly discounted compared to Equity Bank, where that uh, stands at 3.67. What's your view on those two comparatively? Okay, um, equity bank's raise was primarily d driven by uh, a new product that uh, equity were, launch or were trying to launch in, uh, uh, with, uh, with Safaricom. Uh, it was M Casho, uh, and they are looking to bring in, uh, because M it's actually M Pesa being driven to, uh, to, to the bank, and that's mobile transfer, uh, it's, which is basically a banking service. Uh, so the, the, the initial expectations were that. Out of the 10 million uh, accounts being held by Safaricom, a sizable amount who should be able to move to, to Equity Bank, uh, which doesn't, didn't necessarily happen. Uh, but uh, uh, we've seen with the results, uh, they, st they still had some significant growth in, in, in accounts uh, being held by, by Kenyans at Equity. So, uh, and again, of course, the, the, the growth in earnings helps. So that, 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 that's the source of the equ equities share price. On the other hand, KCB uh, had, a, had a rights issue. Uh, it was not really, it wasn't really received well uh, here locally. Uh, that's what depressed the price. Uh, the, 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 the fear of dilution led investors to, to dump the stock, then drive, driving down the price. Um, the, other, the other issue about KCB is uh, the low growth of, in, of profitability, both half year and third quarter results compared to its peers in the in the in the market so that also uh, has served to hold it down as at now at 23 uh, but uh, going forward you're right the the, P, the the price to book value which uh, of course captures earnings power should exp should 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 be able to propel the com the company f uh, further in, in terms of profitability if they're able to re uh, move back to normal profitability remember they've just done a, a rights issue having raised a couple yeah. of billion. Well, as companies across the board focus on unlocking value, let's put the Tattoo project in focus here because local investors are seeking invest uh, opportunities in the real estate sector and they've had this chance now to participate in the construction of Kenya's single biggest project by buying parcels of land to build. Uh, to what extent are you seeing this as a clear roadmap for agricultural companies to unlock shareholder value? Well, uh, I've, I've always speculated this was always going to happen because uh, returns at in, 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 in the agricultural sector were, were trailing those of the construction sector. And it was only a matter of time before resources started shifting to construction, being the next logical movement. I mean, having holding large parcels of land, especially those who are farming uh, coffee and tea, which earlier on, not now, earlier on were, were yielding poor, uh, poor, poor returns. So. This, this transformation in coupled with the, the, the need for, for, for housing in, 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 in Kenya right now uh, was always logical uh, and, and 
I, I guess uh, having uh, having had uh, investors having had the house reports mm -hmm. on where um, uh, l l l returns from real estate have have, have outperformed returns in the stock market. Uh, it was only logical that uh, you will see more of this uh, going forward. With that becoming uh, so an increasing trend in Kenya, I mean, and it's not just farmers in Kenya that are taking this opportunity. Uh, players across the region are looking at this as a lucrative way to uh, boost earnings moving forward. What do you see it spelling for the tea and coffee space in Kenya, specifically where you've got a flourishing sector for a faltering sector? Well, um, of course, the the... the the, the drop in, in coffee production, of course, at some point, will will begin to 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 see the farmers yield better returns because now um, uh, demand supply dynamics will favor the the, the coffee earnings, and it, it may take time. Tea, on the other hand, also has the same issue. I mean, you've got you've got you've got Kenya exporting 95% of its produce, uh, which which seems quite quite large uh, compared to uh, other tea producing countries. So. At, at some point, you expect uh, when when the commodity rally uh, ends, you may you may you may expect that uh, tea tea going back to its norms, where uh, farmers are always complaining on yields, and therefore uh, people re rerouting their, their their investments to real estate, which on the other hand again uh, may risk over 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 supply. Remember, if if you if you if you if you are if you had gone over the the house report uh, on housing in Kenya. Um, you, you you will see that uh, the top end has, has had, had an oversupply and underperformed the Nairobi Stock Exchange. So there, there's always that danger that, uh, that, that the shifting in resources. So where we've got agri players uh, trading at quite a discount at this stage, I mean, would you be a buyer if you can get your hands on stock within that sector? No, I'd, I'd pay closer attention to the dynamics. Again, uh, you see the the report on the La Nina. Uh, served to hit some of these stocks uh, I mean, uh, negatively, uh, so and and and, and that has been uh, the, the agricultural stocks Achilles' heel in Kenya, uh, because Kenya is not necessarily seen as a very uh, efficient producer when it comes to agriculture. So I even then, um, you might you might want to trade carefully, mm -hmm. even even as opportunities still exist in the agricultural sector.